and a very warm welcome to Rising Stars. I'm Vikram Oza. Now, from all accounts, the need for workspaces is indeed growing in India. Here on Rising Stars, we feature some of the leading startups operating in that business. But how we understand collaborative workspaces are uh, these hubs of action where everyone is struggling to learn and grow together. But now the COVID industry in India is getting a little disruptive. It's increasingly catering to large companies as well as small and medium enterprises. And this all in an effort to improve their prospects for growth and stability. We have one such company on the show today, SmartWorks, uh, which came up a couple of years ago in 2016. They're telling us they have uh, 250 clients, over a million square feet of working space that's spread across uh, 15 odd centers across the big cities of the country. The smallest, I'm told, is a 9,000 square feet uh, workspace. Uh, this happens to be in Mumbai. Why am I not surprised? It's in Lower Perel. And the largest is a 3 lakh square feet facility that Smart, uh, SmartWorks has in uh, the city of Bangalore. Nitish Sarda is the man pushing the agenda for this startup and joining us on Rising Stars. Great to have you with us. Great to be here. Thank you so much. Nitish, I mean, this is a crowded space. There are a lot of players within that. Yeah. What got you into it? So basically, there's actually a very interesting story on how we thought about getting into SmartWorks. And there were three seminal moments in my life that actually motivated me to do something uh, in the co-working industry. When I was studying abroad, uh, we'd gone for campus visits to uh, the Google offices, Facebook offices, and you know the kind of infrastructure that they've created? Uh, people are the biggest assets, right? Yeah. And they've invested heavily on, uh, you know, employee engagement, employee satisfaction, which in turn uh, increases productivity for them. Uh, fast forwarding, when I came back to India and we joined my father's business in the initial days, I could see a major difference in the kind of culture that is there uh, in these companies compared to what we were trying to do here. And uh, I was trying to understand what is the reason. Why can't we replicate that culture here? Obviously, it sounds very good that you want to become the Google or the face, you want to replicate Google or Facebook, but in our own small way, why can't you do those things inside in, uh, in your own offices? Right. Um, what it what seems that you're trying to do right now is uh, replicate a certain model that has kind of worked, and that's yeah, we work, yeah. and you're trying to create that with smart work. So, is that right, or would that not be true? Not really. So WeWork is more of a co-working space that uh, basically uh, focuses a lot on community and focuses a lot on engagement. We also do that, but how we are different is that we're saying uh, we're not just focusing on community. We're actually not a co-working space. We're a service office space in which uh, we get you the best of both worlds. While we get you the entire community aspect and the the, the culture aspect of a community uh, of a co-working space, we get you the of designing your own space and uh, creating your own and that's a new market that's developing because obviously I see a lot more corporates and uh, you know small and medium companies uh, wanting to uh, get into the co-working environment uh, what's uh, leading that change because uh, for a certain amount of time there was a very structured approach to uh, office spaces yeah, but yeah. that seems to be changing because everyone wants a hassle-free solution, right? If, even if you look at the real estate market in India, if you look at how uh, housing has been affected by introduction of guys like Oyo or Zolo or, or uh, Nestaway, right? Yes. People don't want the hassle of running or maintaining their own space. Yes. They want a much more flexible option. And flexibility actually works across different vectors. Mm -hmm. Flexibility is not just on the tenure that you get into, but flexibility on design, flexibility on the kind of culture that you want to create in your own space and flexibility in terms of uh, the kind of All of which tenure. you're bringing to the table right now, Nitish, but this obviously uh, means your costs run as well, because yeah. if you're going to give the best of both worlds, like you're saying, it's not a one-size-fits-all. There is a certain amount of maneuverability that you're doing. So what's the percentage of uh, change that you can bring in specifically for a client, and how much does that uh, really push up the costs in terms of what you're able to provide them? So the cost doesn't make any difference here, because the that you bring into for any particular client is uh, only on the elements which are visible in front of the client. So civil work or electrical work or things which are done on the back end for any client is going to be generic for everyone, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the add-ons that a client requires, uh, an office for Microsoft will be a very different office for Amazon Web Services, right? Like Amazon Web Services has taken up an office with uh, us in Pune in which uh, they've actually created a green room. So it's got green carpets, it's got bamboo shoots mm -hmm. as walls instead of having like, you know, the normal gypsum walls or carpets. So there are few costs that you incur more, uh, slightly higher, but uh, I don't think there's a big difference there. But then what about the pricing? Uh, per because that's how uh, most of these co-working spaces Again, work. Again, that's why we, with 
all of the customizations we do, we're able to maintain our pricing, uh, and we like to compare ourselves to conventional offices. So compared to a conventional office, yeah. office, we turn out to be 10 to 15 percent cheaper. This is only because of How economies of scale. How do you manage to keep your uh, cost down? You economies of scale. Economies of scale because yeah. you have these uh, 15 centers, and you're able to deal with vendors in a certain fashion. Exactly. Is that all that it takes, or uh, is there something more to this? Because you've also been in the real estate business. Yes, yeah. your family yeah. has been. Yeah. So do tell me if there is any uh, kind of uh, uh, understanding or any kind of perk that comes with that background? So, being from that background, we understand which are the areas where, which we have to focus on in order to get the cost down. Uh, having said that, it is just because of the economies of scale that, uh, like, you know, instead of doing our 10,000 or 20,000 or 30,000 square foot at any given point of time, we're doing our 300,000 or 400,000. Mm -hmm. Because of that, uh, your cost significantly goes down. But your uh, pricing, which is around 10,000 rupees a uh, feet, yeah. uh, on an average yeah. uh, scale as far as uh, India as a market is concerned, uh, how do you think that is going to grow over a period of time? and how have you seen it reflect in your revenue so far considering that you've uh, been in operation for a couple of years? Yeah, so uh, I think 10,000 rupees a seat right now is very, very comfortable. We're looking at how to get that cost down uh, even further down for our clients, but uh, that is something Without impacting everywhere. your revenues? Without impacting Which our revenues. Where right now on an analyzed basis? So uh, at this point of time, we're on a run rate of about 120 to about 120 crores. Right, and you're growing your number of centers. Uh, yeah. What are the expansion plans? Because you're already in about nine cities? We're in nine cities. We've covered all the tier one cities in India yet uh, so far. We're about 1.2 million square foot. Uh, within the next three years, we're looking at 5 million square foot to go to. Uh, the short term plan within the next 12 months is to go to about 2.5. Million. But By the all end of this expansion financial. is going to cost you a lot of money. You've yeah. already put in a lot of uh, the money that you already brought to the table, which is uh, $20 million so far? Approximately. Yeah. And how much more are you going to need for further expansion now? How are you planning to raise it? So, uh, expansion, a lot of it is actually from the accruals that we're, we're already in black. So, we're making a lot of uh, uh, money at this point of time. Uh, having said that, uh, obviously external funding is going to be a part of it, but more than the quantity, we're looking at the quality of the fund, uh, the pedigree of the investor that uh, needs to step in at this point of time, because you know, you're going to be engaged to that guy for a very long time, and we look we think that this business has a huge potential. In two short years, we've gone from zero to uh, 1.2 million square foot, and five million square foot doesn't look that difficult if we grow at the pace we are growing at. at well, right we now. certainly hope you do, Nitesh Sardar. Thank, Thank you, you, you so much for joining us so on Rising Star. Thank Pleasure you. to talk to you. Indeed, there'll be lots of entrepreneurs uh, who feature on Rising Stars in the future. But for the moment, a small break. Much more on the flip side. Do stay with us.